Fire Emblem Warriors has been the pipe dream game that Fire Emblem and Musou fans alike have wanted for years. With Koei Tecmo polls and fan UI mockups being posted on the internet for years, seeing an announcement at Nintendo Switch conference earlier this year was a dream come true for so many people. Since then, we have learned a lot of information about this game that has become very divisive amongst fans. Does this game live up to the expectations of both sets of fans, or does it fall to being overly ambitious like so many other games today? Today, we take a look. If you played Hyrule Warriors or any of the other Koei Tecmo developed crossover Musou titles, you know exactly what kind of story you'll be getting into. You'll have characters stupidly misunderstanding each other for an excuse to fight them, ancient prophecies, people turning into giant monsters, etc. Sadly, Fire Emblem Warriors is even more underwhelming than the majority of other crossover games from a story perspective. This is due to the source material having such a rich universe for stories to be told, and not much of it is used. Most, if not all, of the characters introduced in the game serve no purpose to the story, only to exist for a line or two of dialogue so the player even knows they exist. The story just feels like a bit of filler, with an ending that only seems to promote a potential sequel. Once again, it's a bit disappointing they didn't delve more into the Fire Emblem lore when writing this game's story. Although the Switch isn't necessarily a powerhouse console, the game still delivers mostly solid visual presentation. The game presents two graphical options, 1080p 30 frames per second with a few frame drops, and 720p 60 frames per second with a mostly locked frame rate. The visual effects and level designs are faithful to the franchise and don't become overstimulating during battle. The handheld mode plays at 720p 30 frames per second and with few frame drops here and there, but not enough to become distracting or take away from the gameplay experience at all. And now on the sound design. Fire Emblem games have been known to have overwhelmingly well-received soundtracks, and this game takes some of the most memorable tracks from the franchise and makes amazing remixes and melodies with them. A lot of the sound effects and notification noises have been taken straight from Fire Emblem games associated with them and honors them quite well. Other than that, there isn't much to say about the audio design. It's what every franchise honoring a game should try to achieve. In terms of gameplay, Fire Emblem Warriors isn't creating any new concepts or reinventing the wheel, just taking a really basic wheel and putting a good level of polish on it. It is your basic Musou gameplay with just a few unique twists like the weapons triangle found in Fire Emblem. This creates a rock-paper-scissors format in your character's weapon use, which promotes creating a team with a good balance of weapon types. It retains the base capture found primarily in Hyrule Warriors and Samurai Warriors respectively as well. Characters can also use the pair-up mechanic found in, in Fire Emblem as well that allows them to rank up their support level and unlock conversations between characters, deepening their bonds. These conversations can also lead to some very humorous circumstances. Now on to content. This part pains me the most to talk about. As a longtime Fire Emblem fan, my soul felt a deep pain when I read the game would only include characters from the most mainstream games in the franchise. As we saw earlier this year with Dragon Quest Heroes 2, you can honor a series of a Musou spin-off and nail nearly every major game in the series of roster representation. The fact that a dearly beloved franchise like this one with nearly 20 years to its name only has a roster of characters from three games is just downright disappointing. I would count the inclusion of Celica and Lin, but they are only available post-completion of the story, which makes it feel like they were only added in at the last minute. It's honestly a bit insulting to fans of the series that have been playing since before Fire Emblem Awakening released. Aside from the roster complaints, the game's main story takes around 10 hours to complete on normal difficulty. During the game, you unlock History Mode, which allows you to visit maps from the few mainline games represented with the ability to unlock previously mentioned characters, like Lin and Celica. These will give you a fair amount of post-game content to complete, though not nearly as much as Adventure Mode found in Hyrule Warriors. Overall, to say that this game is a disappointment would be completely unfair. It does its job just fine, but it doesn't really satiate the appetite of Musou game fans or Fire Emblem fans. This is a decent spin-off on the Musou game formula, and some elements from each of the respective series blend together quite well. Some areas of the game have a lot of love for series veterans, while other areas feel quite lacking. If you're in the mood to carve up hundreds of Pegasus Knights while jamming out to the main Fire Emblem theme, this is the game for you. But, if you're looking for the older games to get any screen time or relevance, you'll have to look elsewhere. 
Hopefully, a Season 2 of DLC or a sequel will fix a lot of the issues presented in this game. And that does it for our review! To see the written review, be sure to check out our website, GamingGamma.com. A link to that review will be down in the description bar below. Also, if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them, I love hearing from you guys. Also, if you're new to my channel, hey, be sure to subscribe for future Let's Plays, reviews, commentaries, and more. And if you really love what I do, you can go check out my Patreon, every bit helps. Also, if you're already subbed, be sure to click on that bell to be notified when my next review is live. And as always, everyone, thanks for watching.